Hey, this is Craig the Pool Man with Pool Specialist. Today we have a demonstration on how to repair a skimmer throat. And why is this important? This is important because this is probably the most common leak that you're going to find in a gunite or a shot green pool. The reason is, is the pool is concrete and the skimmer is plastic. And so they have different coefficients of expansion and contraction. And in particular, the concrete can really contract in the wintertime and really expand in the summertime. And so a lot of times we get these calls in the middle of the winter that, oh, well, my pool is leaking right down to the skimmer. We go out and test it and sure enough, the skimmer throat is leaking. And unfortunately, in the wintertime, we can't do this repair because of limitations of temperature and dryness. So we put it out to the summertime when it's nice and warm and the stuff will cure correctly. But then they come back and they say, well, my, my leak has gone away. Well, it hasn't gone away, it's just diminished because the concrete has expanded in on the skimmer throat and there's less of a crack. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take a Dremel, Dremel tool and we are going to use a tile bit and we're going to create a groove around the inside of the skimmer throat between the plastic and the concrete. And normally, most pool companies fill this with hydraulic cement. And hydraulic cement works great on round openings. It does not work so great on rectangular or square openings, mainly because of the contraction and expansion of the concrete, that it, it cracks because it's a very rigid type of material. So, what we do is we're going to grind that out and then we're going to take a special adhesive and we're going to use that adhesive to bond the concrete to the skimmer throat. And the only thing that I have found that works is the 3M, it's called 5200. And we'll show you what this is so that you can find it. I usually get it at West Marine just because they usually have it on hand. It's very easy to get to and very available. And this is the fast cure. The fast cure is absolutely imperative that you use the fast cure. The fast cure claims that it cures in 24 hours, whereas the regular 5200 cures per millimeter. And by the time you're done, you've waited about a week for the regular 5200 to cure. So it's not like you're gonna be working with this and it's gonna set up like hydraulic cement. This has got a lot of work time in it. And so always, always use fast cure. I like to use little tubes and mainly because it gives me a lot more flexibility inside the skimmer throat. It does come in regular caulk tubes, but the caulk tubes are very difficult to manipulate in that skimmer throat and then you have a lot of extra and the extra just goes to waste because there is no way to seal this up. If you are using this tube, you can actually put the cap back on it and then put it in the freezer and you can save it for a couple months if it's in the freezer. Of course, you'll have to take it out and thaw it out. But that's the 5200 and we have a Dremel tool and of course, after we Dremel, around the skimmer throat, we're going to need our shop vac to go ahead and clean the whole thing up before we actually go ahead and put the adhesive in there. You're definitely going to want to wear rubber gloves when you do this because that 5200 does not come off and I do not know what, what type of solvent you could use to get it off your fingers. So wear good, good nitrile gloves. I like to use like the seven mil type just so that I don't have to worry about it. They're cheap and they're disposable. This is the skimmer throat and you can see that somebody put pool putty in here in an attempt to fix this probably in the winter time. So unfortunately all that's going to have to come out because pool putty is is not a permanent solution. It just causes problems. Of course, I'm using my iPhone to take these videos because what happens is uh, I don't want to 
accidentally drop a $5,000 camera in the water. So we're gonna work on getting this out and then I'm going to go ahead and show you how the Dremel tool takes it out. You can see how the pool putty has easily been removed. I simply used a cold chisel and a rubber mallet and now we are ready to go ahead and use our Dremel tool. Okay, so this is actually the tile cutting bit that you would buy for a Dremel tool. And that's what you'd use to cut your groove. Now, something that I didn't mention earlier is make sure that that Dremel tool and your shop vac are plugged into a GFI outlet because God forbid you drop that Dremel tool in the water, you don't want to electrocute yourself. So now you can see that I cut a nice little groove, not only into the plastic, but also into the tile. It's very important that you, you gouge into the tile because you want good adhesion. And while it will stick to this to the slick surface of a tile, it will stick a whole lot better to where you have removed that glaze off of the tile. So this is all done. We took our shop vac, we shopped it, shop vac'd it out. Notice how dry it is. If you remember from the video, you notice that the water has been drained about four inches below the skimmer throat. And you wanna do that for at least 24 hours before you start per performing this process. We've cut a rather large opening. This stuff is actually pretty thick. And we're going to now take that and put it around the inside. Here is the finished product. You'll notice that I applied it and I try to apply it, pushing it into the groove. And then I go ahead and I take my finger and I smooth it out onto the tile and then also into the skimmer throat. I apologize if you know, if you're looking down the skimmer throat, it doesn't look all that pretty. Um, and if you really wanted to go to extents and people are fussy about that, you could remove the tile and then put it underneath the tile and put the tile back and for customers that really want to spend the money and want it that done um, we're more than happy to do it but they will need to have extra tile because typically when you're trying to remove the tile you're going to break it so you can see that it forms a an excellent excellent um, seal around it now my recommendation is leave the actual skimmer lid or the deck plate off. And then also make sure that you leave the actual skimmer weir out. When you're applying this, you wanna make sure the skimmer's weir is out. And you also wanna make sure that you don't cover the holes for the skimmer weir on both sides. You may have to, so I make sure that I clean them out, um, but you may have to take a small drill bit by hand and then drill them out. Um, I'm sure that that's not where your leak is because the skimmer is designed not to leak where the holes are for the skimmer weir. That concludes our video for the day. Um, I hope you found it educational. And if you did, please drop us a like. Follow us on the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.